Hello and welcome to today's Musical Safari Concert, which is sponsored by Stallard March and Edwards Solicitors. Music is used to describe lots of different things, and in today's concert we're going to see how music is used to portray different animals. I'm sure that we'll find some animals that you are familiar with, and if you're really lucky, we might even spot some rather elusive and rare magical creatures too. We all know about the animals going into the ark two by two. So to start with, I'd love you to join me in spotting some of those animals going into the ark. You may know this song. It goes like this. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went in two by two, the elephant and the kangaroo, and they all went into the ark for to get out of the rain. Do you think you could help me sing the rest of that song? We'll start with the elephant and the kangaroo. He's eaten so much that he gets stuck in the door. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into by two. The great hippopotamus stuck in the door and they all went into the ark for to get out of the rain. Now I wonder if, like me, you have a naughty brother or sister. I have two naughty brothers and they're a bit like the naughty monkey that's just about to go into the ark. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into by two. The naughty monkey got onto his tricks and they all went into the ark for to get out of the rain. I don't know about you, but I'm always running late, so I feel really sorry for the poor turtle who's coming next and thinks he's going to be late. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into by two. The turtle thought he was going to be late and they all went into the ark for to get out of the rain. And last but not least, I can see that the little red hen is going up the plank into the ark. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into the ark, hurrah, hurrah. The animals went into by two. The last one in was a little red hen and they all went into the ark for to get out of the rain. I hope that that has prepared you on our mission to spy loads of animals on our safari. Don't worry, I'm not going to be singing throughout the whole of the concert. As you can see here, I've got my violin and I'm going to play you some music about different animals on it. Having seen that the last animal to get on the ark for us was the little red hen, I thought it might be nice to look for some other hens and chickens to keep it company. The Russian composer Modest Mussorgsky wrote a piece about chickens as part of a bigger work called Pictures at an Exhibition. Listen to how he shows the chickens 
pecking and scratching at the ground and clucking. chickens and hens clucking and pecking at the ground. I think I've just spotted the first couple of creatures left behind by the ark. I can't wait to show them to you. They are quite different. One jumps around a lot. It is the Ellie flea. Hear how the piano is very high and bouncy like a flea, whilst the violin is jumping up and down but sounds quite heavy and low like an elephant. I usually use my bow here to play, but for this piece, I'm going to be playing pizzicato, which means I'm gonna use my finger to pluck the strings. The other creature I can spy is a very magical and very graceful, quiet animal. It's the golden unicorn. really graceful and so gentle and quiet. Saint-Saëns wrote a very famous work in 1886 depicting various animals including a swan who we're going to meet a bit later, kangaroos, elephants, fish in an aquarium, tortoises and the next animal 
who is described as the character with long ears. I wonder if you can guess what animal Sansor is trying to describe here. It was the donkey going, ee oh. Now the creatures left behind by the ark include some animals quite similar to donkeys. We have the two-legged pony, who you will hear trotting along very merrily. And we have the six-humped camel. I don't know about you, but when I hear the six-humped camel, I can really imagine it bobbing up and down on the sand in the desert. See whether you can count one, two, three, four, five, six to the tune, because I think that's where the humps come in. on that camel. We're going to look up into the skies now for the next set of animals. I think I can see a UFO in the distance. Oh no, it's okay. We're not going to get taken over by aliens. Phew, it's only a winged hamster. I think it looks a bit like a bat there gliding so calmly in the sky.
a different feeling to the hamsters that I've seen. They always seem to be scurrying around in their exercise uh, wheels. Now I am sure that the next piece doesn't need any introduction to you. It comes from the film Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. It is used to accompany another animal that flies and that we are a little bit more familiar with. It is considered to be a very wise animal, but also quite a mystical animal. Can you think what that is from Harry Potter? Of course, it's Hedwig's theme. Listen to how the composer, John Williams, helps us imagine the owl gliding and swooping in the sky, as well as suggesting the magical character of Hedwig through his use of the celeste and the glockenspiel and the very fast scales going up and down in the strings all underneath that beautiful, calm, gliding tune of Hedwig. For the last animal in the sky, I'm going to introduce you to a skylark. Have you ever looked up into a clear blue sky and seen what looks like a speck floating effortlessly in the air? Then it swoops and darts before hovering again as if suspended in mid-air. I love seeing the birds doing this over fields by me. Next time you go for a walk, why don't you see if you can see any birds doing this? I'm going to play you a short extract from The Lark Ascending by Vaughan Williams. I want you to try closing your eyes whilst I play the piece and see if you can picture the birds in the sky just as I described.
Now we all know that birds and cats don't really get on, don't we? The next piece is a song by the Italian composer Rossini. It's a duet by two animals. I wonder if you can guess what the animals are. If I put these on, can you guess? Can you see what earrings I've got today? Ah, that's right, I've got some cat earrings. The song by Rossini is called The Cat Duet. Rossini wrote this after a rather sleepless night caused by two cats meowing very loudly outside his bedroom window. Listen to it and see how they're arguing and trying to do one better over the other each time. Rossina's window, weren't they? Now my favourite animal is my dog. She's a really lovely golden retriever called Amber. She gets rather excited when she sees cats and can't quite understand why they run away from her when she just wants to play with them. Maybe Rossini needed her to scare the cats away from outside his bedroom window. Anyway, Amber loves going for walks in the park and so I thought I'd better play a piece for her. It is by the American composer George Gershwin and is called Walking the Dog. See if you can hear how Gershwin depicts walking in the bass part. You may even be able to hear an excited woof or two.
really nice gentle walk through the park, wasn't it? We will now go on and look um, down by the river for some more animals. Maybe we will spot the mole fish. It swims around rather slowly and calmly. In Worcester, we have a lot of swans on the river, don't we? They look so calm and majestic floating on top of the water, don't they? But have you ever seen what their feet are doing under the surface of the water? Paddling at high speed furiously. Sanson illustrates this by having the tune gracefully floating over the top of an accompaniment which is moving much, much faster. You'll see that I'm changing instruments now. I'm going to play the swan on my viola. You can see it's a bit bigger than my violin and it sounds a bit lower. So my violin and then my viola. So you can hear it's that little bit lower. Sanson originally wrote this piece for a cello, which is a really big string instrument, but I don't play the cello. But I think that this piece sounds really nice on a viola. In fact, I think it probably sounds a bit better.
We are nearly at the end of today's concert. I really like the last creature who was left behind by the Ark. He's a rather jolly fellow. He likes to dance. He's a bit like me. He's not graceful or light on his feet. He kind of stomps around a bit. He is called the Rhinosaur. jolly fellow. Thank you to Stallard March and Edward Solicitors for sponsoring this event and thank you all for joining me on my musical safari. I hope you have enjoyed discovering all the animals, the usual and the unusual ones. If you look on the concert page you will find pictures of some of the animals we've met today to download and to colour in. You may have even got ideas about what some of the creatures left behind by the Ark might look like. Why not have a go at drawing them? I'd love to see them. You can share them with the Worcester Festival 2020 via Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Don't forget to keep an eye out for all the animals. You never know what you might find hiding in the bushes.